Hello folks, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video we're going to take a look at what it takes to get MVS and VSE to run under VM. So we're going to look at VSE ESA 2.1 and MVS ESA 5.2.2, both of which are around 1996 versions of the system. Of course we're running this on venerable VM ESA 2.3. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and log in as a mate. Now I'm already logged in as mate, but what we need to do here is we need to create a directory file. So we're going to start with VSE because it's a little bit simpler. So here's what I ended up with. This is a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple definition here. So we'll scroll down a little bit here. So let's go ahead and walk through this. So this is just like defining any other user on VM. So user. Here's our username, this is the password, minimal storage, maximal storage, and a privilege class. Of course, we're using privilege class BG because we don't need to control really any devices other than maybe plug up a tape drive. So that's what class B lets you do. Machine ESA, if you're doing a 370 mode VM, you'd of course do machine 370. IUCV any, yes, this is important if you have anything that's using IUCV. In this case, this particular VSE system does. IUCV allow. And then we'll allow connections to the IDENT service to allow IECV sockets to be listened upon, if you will. Okay, option MaxCon 496, that's also for IECV. IPL 140, this is the disk that we will automatically load up from when we kick off the VM, which means when we log into it, this is what we'll get. This right here is our console. Of course, we're defining a 3270 console as opposed to a 3215 console. And then we have these here. So how do you define terminals to dial to? You just do this. You just specify a bunch of specials. And then down here, we also have specials for channel-to-channel -channel adapters, of which we have three, which of course is for VTAM, SNA, and something else that I'm not entirely sure why that's there. Our card reader, our card punch, and our printer, and then these are our two DASD drives. And then this right here is from Dermate. So if you have Dermate, you can now just go ahead and do Dermate add, or actually Durham add VSC old. If you don't, simply edit your directory file, put that at the bottom, and then run directxa, which, if you don't know, is on mate 193, so access 193d, and then that's where that is. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to log in and reconnect to the running VSC old system. So when you hit enter a few times and clear, that will do it. So, of course, this is VSE, so we can do CPQ v CTC, and we can figure out what our CTC is or attached to, because I do need to know that this right here is RSCS2A. We're going to look at what this means in a second. This is, of course, for networking. This will allow our VSE guest to talk to RSCS through a channel-to-channel -channel adapter. So we're going to go ahead and shut this down. So we just got to wait on that to fully stop. There we go. Scroll, scroll, scroll. At this point, we're going to do CP log off. We're going to do this from a total clean start. So we'll go ahead and connect. Now, as soon as I press enter, the system's going to run. Okay? Bam. We're, we've IPO and we have started. So that's what that IPO line does is it makes it super easy. Really, all you do is you just attach the DASDs and it will just work. It is easy as pie. Of course, we can... Scroll really quickly. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while we wait on this, we can actually do things. So the first and most important thing is you're gonna to need to know how to do is press your attention key one. In this case, that's PA1. So go ahead and press PA1 and type in, in my case, couple E20 to RSCS2A. That's our channel to channel adapter. Now you can see we're still doing this. So we've stopped the VM. However, we want this to run in the background, so go ahead and type in set run on and hit clear. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and start up our networking. And now I'll need to go in from another console here and quickly reestablish the networking connection there. Okay, so there we go. I just restarted it from the uh, RSCS side. So at this point, we are pretty much ready. Now, of course, you can do PA1. Of course, the moment I hit enter, you see it's still running. While you're in CP read mode, the VM is still executing. Keep that in mind. But you can also do CP set run on like this. 
This only works on the VSE console, by the way. This has nothing, or doesn't do anything on NVS. And of course, we can CP disk, and we can disconnect. Now, we can start this back up, we can dial VSE old. So there we are. That's it. And of course, we can do VM to back out. Now, that's... It's literally, that's literally it. All you have to do is just attach the DASDs to your system, define them in whatever you may need to find them in, your P390 configuration or whatever you may have, and then just load it up and go. I mean, it is, it is literally that easy. It is shockingly easy. Now, NVS though, NVS is a little bit worse for wear. So we're going to take a look at that. Now, of course, this is the exact same thing, Machine ESA. We don't have IECV because there's nothing that NVS can really use that has IECV. And this right here is our console. We're at console 700. Now we have four packs. And this right here, I intentionally defined this a little bit differently. This right here says who it's for. So in this case, our entry here can only talk to RCS device 2C. And likewise, this can only talk to VTAN device E4D. Okay, so add that to your directory. Either use Durham add MVS hold or whatever, or just plug it straight into your directory. Now we're going to back up and we're going to take another look at that. Now, if you screw up the dedicate options, I should probably mention those actually. This is virtual device and then real device. So 121 corresponds to real device 221, yada yada yada. Because if I do Q220, there we go, DASD 220, and I can do Q. 220-223, there's our DASI packs, of course they're currently running, and the system's running. We're going to restart it, of course. Keep that in mind, it is backwards. Don't do dedicate real virtual, it's dedicate virtual real. It's kind of odd like that. Okay, now let's go ahead and scoop back over to that console there. Now remember, if you screw this up, you're going to end up with VM malfunction bingo, and you'll be confused because your disk packs won't be attached even though they're there, so keep that in mind. Now, of course, we hit enter. Boom, there you go. Wow, okay, thank you. I do not, ab I absolutely do not want to print those vlogs. Okay, so running out of, okay, that's just an NVS problem. All right. I didn't think this command works. Nope. So, let's see what all we need to shut down. Uh, we're just going to do it the lazy way. Either way, those commands, while being mistyped, would not have worked anyway. You know what? This would be alright. Okay. So, at this point, bam. Boom. Okay. Okay. So, this one does not automatically IPL. Showing you the difference here. This will allow you to set things up beforehand. And because this is MVS, we're going to have to do something important. Okay. So, let's look at that. First, we're going to do a QV so we know what everything is. So, this is going to be our console that's going to be used. This is hard coded in MVS, so we can't change this and we don't need to override it. Down here, these need to be coupled. So, we're going to do couple E20 to RSCS, what was it, 2C? And we'll couple E21 to VTAM E4D, I think it was. Now, this will allow us to establish our networking connections, which is going to be important. Now, Note here, here are our DASDs. Because this is an MVS system, one of these is going to have our actual IO definition file on it. We need to know which one it is. I'm actually going to do something ridiculous, and I intentionally did not look at what it is, because we're going to guess in the hopes that we get it wrong. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you need to do is you need to IPL 120, because this has our IPL track, load parm 0122, and then our sys1.iplparm member. So like load xx, in this case we're going to do load 00, and then nothing. And then we wait. Because this is a slow VM system, so we're going to be here like half a day. Boom. Okay. That actually wasn't so bad. Specify system parameters, no need. If you specify the wrong volume, we get a wait state. So now we just have to wait for the system to come up, which is going to take a little bit, but don't worry, there's video editing trickery being done right now to wait a little bit.
Okay, so now we're actually coming up. It takes a while, but eventually we'll see our Welcome to Jez 2 prompt, is what I call it, so. We'll go ahead and sign off on that. And eventually everything will start like that. Maybe you should be able to do this. Yeah, okay. Then we'll go over to the RSCS side, of course, start that back up. Okay, and then in a second, we should see sign on complete. It just might take a while. RSCS should have that up in a second. Sometimes you don't see a sign on complete, although you should. Okay, there we go. So, we're pretty good there. I, I haven't configured SNA on here. That's it. That's all you have to do. It is literally that easy. It is trivial to get something running. Of course, you need to kick it off and let it run. So, set run on, hit clear, do it again. Discon. Okay, what happens if you're using Telnet 3270 and your terminal disconnects? That will actually boot the VM off and stop it. I know, really, it, yeah, it's kind of dumb, but I guess it is what it is. So watch out for that and make sure that doesn't happen, because if that happens, you'll be up creek without a paddle. But there we go. This is a really short and simple video on how to get all that set up. It's not too terribly difficult, and hopefully you'll be able to follow along at home and have fun with your own. Uh, VM and VSE and MVS systems rocking and rolling with all that good stuff. Alright, have a good one out there and don't blow up your system.